tired of my wilderness. I'm tired of my pain. Welcome back, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, this is part three, I believe it is, of our study on the power and simplicity of true faith. And so I want to do something today that's kind of be, I want to, I want to put a few pieces out. Um, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm putting a, t a puzzle together with this whole study, um, which if you've watched some of the previous videos, you see that I spent a whole year studying faith. And, um, I mean, you're always, you're always learning, learning new stuff, but I'm uh, still kind of putting the pieces together for that, uh, for this, you know, so I can, um, present this and, and, uh, hopefully be helpful. Um, I want to start, um, with this simple thought and that is, let me find my notes here. Uh, I was going to use my laptop, but I'm out where there's no cell service, so <laughs> I'm having to use my notes on my cell phone um, because I couldn't get my computer to work without internet out here. So, anyways, um, here's what I want to uh, I want to talk about for this for this uh, vlog is basically growing your faith, and this is not going to be exhaustive, but I'm going to throw a few things out here that I think will will at least give you something to think about and, and chew on. And, you know, being in the spring, it's April here in New York, and things are starting to grow, and it's, you know, gardening season, and it's, you know, it's just, you know, it's just springtime. It's ready for stuff to grow. So I spent a bunch of time today just uh, studying, looking over some scriptures, and I want to I wanna start out with this kind of a thought um, along this about growing your faith. And here it is. Faith is the ongoing work of the Spirit of Jesus persuading us of who He is and what is true. Faith is the ongoing work of the Spirit of Jesus, that's the Holy Spirit, in case you didn't know that, I'm sure most everybody did, but the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. Faith is the ongoing work of the Spirit of Jesus persuading us of who He is and what is true. Psalm, Psalm, four, uh, Psalm 31, 14, David said this, which captures captures the heart attitude that we have to have for our faith to grow because the attitude of our heart makes a huge difference in other words faith is a faith faith is a faculty of the heart we we trust with our heart and god is after our hearts um, he were to love God with all of our heart. I mean, the heart, the heart, the heart is a, um, the heart is, that's what God's after. I mean, scripture is, scripture is the story of God trying to get a hold of the heart of man. So David in Psalm 31, 14 says, I am trusting you, O Lord, saying, you are my God. I am trusting you, O Lord, saying you are my God. Now notice that's that's a decision of the will. I am trusting you. O Lord, saying you are my God. Now that's easier said than done sometimes. Um, and I'll I'll get to that a little bit later, but Okay, so let me go back to, um, I want to give you, basically I want to give you three passages uh, to think about in relationship to how our faith grows. The first one is Philippians 1.6, which says, Being confident of this, that he who began 
the good work within you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. This is Paul talking to the church at Philippi, obviously. And he says, um, he's confident that he who began the work will carry it on. And as we've talked about before, the word faith means to win over or to persuade. To win over or persuade. So God, part of how he, how he produces faith in us, how he helps us grow in faith, is he's, persuade, he's persuading us. He's always trying to persuade us of something to do with who he is, um, his own character, or what's true. Um, and again, back to my little, uh, my thesis statement, or is faith is the ongoing work of the Spirit of Jesus persuading us of who he is and what is true. And so I hope you see that, that our attitude makes all the difference in this because you can be like you know you can be like a stubborn two-year-old you want your two-year-old to do something and they're like no nope. <laughs> i'm not gonna do it <coughs> and you can have that attitude but you're gonna stunt your own growth if you do that and we've all done it i mean i you know i've, I've done it um but we can't produce faith within ourselves, but our heart attitude matters big time. Big time. And Paul's saying to the Philippians, He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. Alright, next verse is kind of one of our theme verses. Um, there's three of them, and one of those is Romans 117. And uh, we will come back to this verse, because this is... This is one of the key verses about faith in Scripture. Romans 1.17 says, This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. And then it tells us how that happens. This is accomplished, what? Being made right with God. From start to finish. Very important. Very important. Start to finish. He who began a good work will carry it on. Start to finish. You know, run the race marked out for you. Faith is a is is an ongoing journey of learning to trust God in the circumstances and stuff we deal with. But then verse 17 goes on and says, As scripture says, it is through faith that a righteous righteous, righteous person has life. It is through faith that a righteous person has life. And so, again, it, it's not a one-time thing. Okay? Let me say it this way. Um, tr your true life began when you got saved. Okay? Now, some of you may, may hear that and go, huh? Like, you know, or you may not believe that at all. And, you know, that's okay. Um, I, I hope you are open to being persuaded otherwise. <laughs> because life as, God, life as God intended it, He was involved in. You know, Jesus said, He is the resurrection, and the life. He doesn't just give it to us. He is life. And I know, I know that's hard to grasp, but I'm not going to go too deep in that, although I could. But let me just read this verse again, because this, this verse is so important. This good news, and you know, we think about the good news, we often think about how you get saved, and of course that's, that's I mean, that's the bullseye. That's you know, you, you, don't know, you don't know life in Christ until you're in Christ, right? You know, you, 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 there's, there's just, li just natural life, but then there's life as God intended it. 
which um, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but I'm infamous for doing that. Um, this good news then covers a lot of things. The bullseye, of course, is, salva is salvation, the gospel, the good news of how we get, you know, but, but, you know, I think we need to broaden our, we need to think of the good news as all, the, all of the good news, all of the things that are good about God and all that. Anyways, um, so this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight, but then notice it says this is accomplished from start to finish. So there's a moment of salvation, but then there's living it out. Then there's, you know, um, living by faith, learning how to do that, okay? This is accomplished from start to finish by faith, by being persuadable, by what is God trying to persuade me of? I, I guarantee you, everybody listening to this, myself included, God is trying to persuade us of something. He's trying to grow, he wants to grow our faith, okay? It is through faith, trusting him, being willing to be persuaded, that a righteous person has life. So I want to do one more scripture here, uh, Galatians chapter 3, starting in verse 23. And I want to point out something that just really struck me this morning. Sorry, there's flies buzzing around in here. And <laughs> Too distracted, okay. Here's Galatians 3.23. It says, Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guardian by the law. Because if you read Galatians, Paul, these, these new Christians were, they were basically going back underneath and trying to keep the law. Okay? And Paul's trying to teach them about the way of faith. Okay. Uh, we were kept in protect, protective custody, so to speak, until, and notice it says it again, the way of faith was revealed. Let me put it another way. The law was our guardian until Christ came. It protected us until we could be made right with God through faith. Now that, here it is again, notice this man, this is so important. The way of faith has come. We no longer need the law as our guardian. Okay, so I want to think about this because one of the things that was a, was a huge revelation for me, um, and if someone had said this, I, pr I probably would have, said, well, I probably would have agreed with it, but I don't know, for some reason it was just something that I didn't, I hadn't really thought about, you know? I mean, listen, if you, if you, if you take seed, okay, and you plant them in a garden, you, you know, you do all you got to do, you dig up the soil, you prepare it, you do all the things you got to do, and you plant seeds, what do you expect to happen? You expect that seed to grow, right? And so, although I know that faith is supposed to grow, I had never really, th I just had never really thought it through. I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy when you think about it because I've been a Christian for 51 years now and, you know, um, anyways. But I, I love this passage here because Paul is, Paul is trying to keep these new Christians from from going back under the law. You know, he's trying to, you know, he's trying to keep them from departing from the way of faith. He says it three times. Verse 23, before the way of faith was available in Christ. Okay? Then in uh, the end of the verse, he says, we we're kept in protective custody, so to speak. So until the way of faith has been revealed. Then at the end of uh, 25, or the beginning of 25, it says, and now that way of faith has come. In other words, 
the law was a was a tutor. The law was, if you will, guardrails, you know, to 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 point people in the right direction, keep people on the road, if you will. But it but the law couldn't make you right with God. Why? Because because we're we're all sinners. <laughs> Because we all missed the mark. Because, you know, we, 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 we all missed the mark. All of us. But now that Christ has come, he, he now, what the law couldn't do, because the law could tell you what you're supposed to do, but it didn't help you do it. But, but the way of faith because faith is in our hearts. It's something that, that God works in our hearts as we're persuadable, as we're open to Him. And, and so Paul is trying to point them to, you know, he's you know, he's probably trying to help them learn the new way. I mean, he's he's laying out the new way, and the new way is faith. And um and so I, I think I think I'll end with that. But I just I just I just want to again read this one statement that I gave here because um, this is kind of my uh, if you want to call it a thesis or whatever you know about how do we grow our faith? Faith is the ongoing work of the Spirit of Jesus. Okay, so we we can't produce faith in ourselves. But if but see why does if we can't produce faith in ourselves, then what can we do to get it? We can be open. We can be persuadable. We can, and where necessary, we need to repent. Because what God wants to do in our hearts, He often can't do because our minds aren't open. Um... And I'm and I'm I'm wrapping up here, but uh, C.S. Lewis has become my favorite. He's my favorite. Uh, what would you call him? My, because he really wasn't an apologist. I mean, he got into apologetic works, but C.S. Lewis was was a was a thinker. He was a, lang a, a literature guy. He, I mean, he's known for the Chronicles of Narnia, and he's known for his his, if you want to say you know, his imagination, you know, um, is, you know, one of the, one of the, the reason why we, why we need to, uh, repent, because repentance just means to change your mind. That's what repentance means. Change your mind, you know, and it's because, you know, we're, we're so prone to not, be persuadable. We're so prone to not believe God, <laughs> you know. And and I understand. I, I I actually do understand. I mean, I do understand. I I. It was. I think it was toward the end of COVID. And um, and I, I'm sorry. I am rambling a little bit, but I'm I'm wrapping things up here. Is, you know. Um, Good news means gospel, but one of the things that came became very clear to me is um, people don't want to embrace the bad news. the The good news, the good news is either the gospel. And I'm talking about the gospel, not just good news. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about what he did, who he is, what he came to do. Um, you know, um, until someone faces the bad news, the good news doesn't sound as great as it actually is. This is kind of an illustration that I use is none of us would want to go to the doctor and hear bad news. None of us. But if we don't, if we don't face the truth of the bad news, okay, the doctor's giving us the bad news so that he can ultimately help us and give us the cure. Well, mankind doesn't want to deal with the bad news, which the bad news being all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
and and so in essence they really do keep themselves from life and I, when I say life I mean life as God intended it and um, anyways I'm gonna stop there but I, I'm really excited about where we're headed um, because there's a whole lot more here that that um, I'm gonna try and unpack and communicate and but anyways I hope this simple short one was helpful you know just to encourage us that you know our our heart posture you know our our openness I mean it really boils down to our openness to God to the Holy Spirit to his work in our life he who began the good work will carry it on to completion so anyways that's number three um, I'm not even sure where I'm going with number four because again I'm I, you know I I uh, I do put time into this but um, I don't always know I don't know how always know where we're going but I got a lot of stuff brewing in me so there's a lot of good stuff in the crock pot so uh, thank you so much for watching would love to hear from me if you know if you just want to leave a comment or something or you know even reach out to me on Facebook or something or personally if you know me personally just to say hello so uh, God bless your day. We'll see you next time. Thank you. You're calling me.